One morning in early summer, Sir Topham Hatt called a meeting with some of his engines at the big station. Why did he have to call us here this early? murmured Henry sleepily. An important engine like me needs to get some rest. After staying up late delivering fish, too. Oh, suck it up, Henry, chipped in Oliver. He didn't call us all here to listen to you complain about what that's worth. And he and Duck laughed hard. Henry was cross and let off steam angrily. Shh, whispered Edward Stern. So Topham Hatt's about to make his announcement. Thank you, Edward, chuckled Sir Topham Hatt. Now then, you've all heard of the thin clergyman. Isn't he the one who wrote stories about us? Ventured Thomas. Why, yes, he was, Thomas, agreed Sir Topham Hatt. Sadly, he has now died. But this year, it's been 100 years since he was born. He paused. To mark this suspicious occasion, What's suspicious? squeaked Percy. And then he hoped Sir Topham Hatt hadn't heard. But he had. Oh, suspicious, Percy. It means important explained Sir Topham Hatt. Percy blushed with embarrassment, and Thomas and James chuckled. To mark this, um, important occasion, I have arranged for a bust of the thin clergyman to be unveiled here in a few weeks. Your duties will be adjusted so that you can all attend. There will also be a very special visitor here to unveil the bush. Sometime later, James was shunting in the yards when Sir Topham Hatt came to see him. Shunting trucks, shunting trucks, grumbled James. I mean, why do I have to do all the shunting round here? I could be pulling passengers or at least doing something important. Ah, James, there you are, he said. I've got an important job for you. <sighs> Please not slow goods, grumbled James hoping that he couldn't hear. He wasn't so lucky. No, no, James, it's nothing like that, laughed Sir Topham Hatt. The crate with the thin clergyman statue has arrived at the other railway. I want you to fetch it, please. Oh, well, right away, sir. That's a good engine. Off you go, then. James puffed off proudly and he would gloat about his important job to any engine he would pass by. Hey Henry, guess who's going to pick up the bust of the thin clergyman? You're looking straight at him. Show off, muttered Henry. Neither he nor James were aware that the arc on one of the bores of Henry's tunnel had been weakened by a heavy rain not too long ago and was beginning to crumble. James began to journey back to the big station with the crate safely on a truck, and he was feeling even prouder than before. But just as he passed through Henry's tunnel, there was a rumble, followed by an enormous crash. Cinders and ashes! What was that? James's driver looked back in alarm. Part of the tunnel had collapsed behind them. The railway to the outside world was completely cut off. Well, that's doing it, he said. We best warn the signalman about this. And he did too, when James stopped at the next signal box. Well, James, ventured Gordon, someone's not looking so splendid now. Tell me. Did you accidentally bust the thin clergyman's bust? Not funny, Gordon, snapped James. I'll have you know that Henry's tunnel's collapsed, and now none of us can reach the other railway from here. Gordon gasped. <gasps> then that means no engines can get onto the island either. But Pip and Emma are on the other side of the tunnel, and they're supposed to bring the important visitors.
As soon as the news reached Sir Topham Hatt, he sent Donald, Douglas, and Henry to help repair the tunnel. But the work took a long time, and they were worried that it wouldn't be mended in time for the centenary. The engines on Thomas's branch line were worried too. What's the matter with you all? asked Thomas's driver. I've never seen anyone this glum before. I don't know, driver, replied Thomas. It's just that we've all got jobs to do on the day of the centenary, but what if no one can get here? Don't worry, soothed his driver. Bertie and his friends are meeting all the trains on the other railway and bringing the passengers over. Well, thought Thomas as Bertie scooted by. At least it's good to know we can rely on him. Gordon, on the other hand, wasn't so grateful. Sir Topham Hatt gave orders to carry on as usual, but Gordon's trains to the other railway had to stop at the workstation. Bertie brought him passengers, but Gordon complained that it wasn't the same. Meanwhile, Percy had a smaller problem. I can't understand it, Toby, he said one day. How everyone can be bothered about something that's broken. Toby was puzzled. Broken? he asked. What do you mean, broken? Well, explained Percy, so Topham Hatt said it was bust. What's bust? The thin clergyman. Poor man, said Percy sadly. Thomas, listening nearby, laughed. <laughs> the thin clergyman isn't broken, he chuckled. A bust is a sort of statue, just the head and the shoulders of a person. And it's not the statue we're bothered about being broken, added Toby. It's the fact that Henry's tunnel is broken. Percy cheered up at once. Oh, he said. Well then, phew, that's a relief. Well, maybe not the tunnel being out of order, but definitely the thin clergyman not being broken. Thomas chuckled. Just try not to embarrass yourself again when the bust is unveiled, Percy. I just hope that everyone can get to see it, put in Toby. What with the tunnel being out of commission and all. A few days later, Sir Topham Hatt went around the sheds announcing that the tunnel had been mended. Oh dear, complained Duck. Why does he insist on standing on top of my tank every time we have meetings like this? The inspectors worked through the night on their safety checks, and the first train allowed through was Pippinella. They raced excitedly through the tunnel, pleased to finally be able to see the rest of Sodor again. At the big station, the bust of the thin clergyman beneath a silk cover was ready. The engines waited anxiously. At last, Edward, who was once again serving as Pip and Emma's pilot, drew in, followed momentarily by the high-speed train, and the first person off the train was a prince. So Topham Hatt greeted him, and after a short speech, the prince pulled the cord. The silk fell to the ground revealing a perfect likeness of the thin clergyman. The engines all gazed at it with amazement, and even Percy was glad to see that it wasn't broken. My parents, said the prince, read stories about your railway to me as a child. There will never be anything like it anywhere. <laughs>